Stanley presents, oh, hey, that's me, The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, Excelsior. Welcome. It's time for The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. Sharing your adventures is an interesting experience. Pack your bag. Grab your passport and prepare to go globe trotting with classic four color adventures of Indiana Jones. Jones? Jones! Dr. Jones, the eminent archaeologist. Hard to believe, isn't it? Ouch. Now, what shall we talk about? Welcome, IndieCast listeners and further fans to the further adventures of Indiana Jones. I am Joe Stuber. And I'm Keith Voss. Joe. It's time to continue the madness here on Further Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we got together, we welcomed Mad Magazine's maddest writer, Dick Bartolo, and chatted about his three indie spoofs for Mad. And today, you and I are going to talk about those stories in detail and just how Mad handled Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I think uh, the, the indie fans might... Hey, look, if you haven't seen the Mad version of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and it's not the movie, but there's like a, a lot of... Oh, it's... I think the people that hate on Crystal Skull will like the Mad Magazine version. And Keith, yeah, it's clever. Oh, yeah, it's definitely clever. Uh, some, some. Uh, we'll we'll talk clever. about it. We'll talk about it. But uh, my goodness, how cool was it to have the great Dick D on the last episode? If if you haven't heard it, first of all, what, what in the world's wrong with you? Go subscribe to the Indycast because you're missing stuff. <laughs> but Keith, we had one of the legendary comedic writers who reinvented match game he's written just about everything for mad magazine longest writing strike longest writing streak on mad Ma- since issue 69 i believe he said I guess and he's has them all in these giant binders and he's cool and he's funny and how amazing was it? That was uh, thanks to Ed for suggesting we do the spoofs. We had thought about it. We had, we'd kind of kicked around, but we, you know, we weren't 100% sure if we were doing these. And then Ed was like, you guys got to do the spoofs. And we're like, all right, we'll do the spoofs. And then we looked in and it's like, hey, let's talk to, to Dick D. Bartolo. And oh, that was that was an episode uh, oh, that, that belongs in a museum, right? Uh, I it it belongs in a museum. I wish we would have had some more time with him today. Let's call him up right now. You know what? Give him a call. Let's see what he's doing right now. No, it would have been great to. To I mean, we we got some great history on on those on the satires that he did. But it would have been really nice to kind of really get into some nitty gritty detail with him as we talk about these. But unfortunately, it's not to be. It's just you and I today. No, and it's and again, it's we're talking about things that you know went back over you know forty years. So um, you know, there's only so much people are going to remember as well. But you know, we dragged these out. We're looking at them. We're going to be talking about them today. For those that aren't familiar with Mad Magazine, Keith, you and I grew up with this. Uh, yes. But if you're not familiar about it, we talked about this last time. It was the Humor Magazine, founded in 1952 by editor Harvey Kurtzman and publisher William Gaines. It started as a comic book, converted a magazine format with issue number 24. 550 standard issues, hundreds of reprint specials, um, the paperbacks. It was Mad TV. People are familiar with Mad TV. I had a very cool experience with Mad Magazine a couple of years ago on Comic Book Central. If you a cheap plug here, comicbookcentral.net, my podcast. <laughs> but check it out. But Here's the thing I had I devoted three episodes of the show to it. Um, so if you after today's show, don't go away now, right? Like <laughs> stop, like listen to us right now. But after today's show, if you want to learn more about Mad Magazine, go over to comicbookcentral.net. It's uh, episode two twenty one. Brian Walker, he's the son of Beetle Bailey creator Mort Walker, um, <laughs> curator. He's the curator of the Mad Museum. That collection of his, all that stuff is at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library right here in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm at. So that is very cool. So if you're near Columbus, Ohio, you want to check that out, be sure to check that out. But check out episode 221 of Comic Book Central, in-depth interview with Brian Walker. 231, that was my Mad Magazine special. I went to the Billy Ireland Museum. They had a huge event. It was called Artistically Mad, Seven Decades of Satire. It featured presentations by... Legendary mad cartoonist Sergio Argonis. He did a he did a whole thing where he just did a bunch of cartoons in a row, and there was an overhead projector, and we watched it. 
I had a chance to talk with him. I met him. He signed all my mad books. It was so cool. Uh, mad collectors Glenn Bray and Grant Geisman. The exhibit curator Brian Walker got to ch- uh, revisit with him. And mad editor Bill Morrison. They relaunched the magazine a couple of years ago with an issue one. Bill Morrison, uh, he was the editor of Bongo Comics, or he was the, he was the editor of Mad Magazine. He was the co-founder of Bongo Comics, the Simpsons Comics. Um, he was amazing. And then on 232, in-depth interview with Bill Morrison. So there's the cheap plug uh, for Comic Book Central. All those episodes are out there. Uh, and Keith, this magazine holds a very special place in my heart. I just remember you see the movie. You watch the TV show, and then Mad Magazine was like this experience. It was an adventure. You open up, and you've got these these parodies, these spoofs of all of these different things. So things that we loved, and then they were making fun of them. Yeah, and it was also a good way back in the day to sort of revisit these things because maybe mm-hmm. not everything got a comic adaptation right. or wasn't you know you couldn't really catch it on TV again. No VCRs or, for a while. I mean, right? Yeah, exactly. So I mean, you know, and, and it wasn't like it is today where you could just either stream it or if you have the DVD or something. You know, so it was a, it was another way of just sort of revisiting those uh, those titles that you loved, but and also they were just damn funny. Oh, they were. And did you have a favorite like? Uh, what was your favorite? Like of all, like we know the Indiana Jones are our favorites. We're going to talk about those yeah. today. But yeah. did you have a yeah. favorite? Like, I mean, there's oh, there's so many, and and you look, you look at Wikipedia, segments. they list them all too. That's yeah, yeah. Dick wrote most had, of them. I think it was more for me. Uh, I had favorite segments because, like, I mm. I discovered Mad Magazine through my cousin Sean, who who was a, a few years older than me, he's about six years older than me, and uh, they lived above. We lived in a in a two family house, and they in in my aunt uncle and and my cousin lived above us so i would always go up and visit him and i just remember being in his room one day and seeing like all these like these funny like comic booking comic book looking magazines and i'm like what are those oh, wait is that indiana jones right yeah, there it looks like Star a comic Wars? book but it wasn't a comic book but it wasn't a comic book. You'd open magazine, it and it'd be like, right oh, yeah it'd be, it, and it almost Black seemed like white. very adult material to me like some of the jokes wasn't in there were, that the key wasn't it yes. didn't you feel like yes. you, you shouldn't be reading it Absolutely, <laughs> and, and and some of the stuff like you know yeah. I was I was I was reading I was like whoa this uh, all right I think and of course my very first Mad Magazine you know how the cover would always say ninety cents cheap you know yes <laughs> mine was real cheap because uh, I, I I took it from my cousin he's probably if he's listening to this <laughs> sorry Sean uh, I took a buck my and a quarter on this one that you're talking That's about cheap right. but yours That's was less right. than a buck and a quarter. It was issue number two fifty, uh-huh. and no surprise, it was uh, the cover was in Banana Jones and the Temple of Goons yeah. and Splash, uh, where 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 Alfred E. Newman is 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 holding the the mermaid's tail, and it looks like he's about to maybe fry it up. Um, he's got the machete. Was, he's dressed like yeah Harrison Ford, right? And I loved that cover. Yeah, but he's cooking that, up Daryl Hannah and. Spl- that yeah, I didn't right? use Daryl Hannah at that point. I just no. it was like it's a fish. I don't know what's going on here. Let's see what's happening. But most of the stuff that I really remember loving and going through Mad Magazine specifically to read uh, this stuff was was like uh, the lighter side of and oh Dave uh, Berg. Yeah, I loved the Dave Berg stuff. Yeah. I did, it was just, and it was just it was it was basically like reading a little bit more of an edgier comic strip. Yeah, because like you know you read the funny papers, like you'd you'd, you'd read you'd you'd read the the the. Um, the, the normal comic strips in the newspapers, or, right, yeah, right, following certain characters. But this was just like the funny side of like um, computers, you know, and it would just right. be like one a one off like funny uh couple of panels with a with a with a nice punchline to it um i loved spy versus spy and of course who can forget the mad foldings i mean oh, the foldings oh, were Jenny. just like i mean i wrecked tons of those magazines because, yeah well that's the thing know? there's a, there's hardly any in mint condition because every we all did the, the al jaffe foldings and yeah. issue 14 uh, like i said bill morrison they launched it at issue one we talked about this on the last episode so go back and check that out but to get a little bit of history but they got up to issue 14 and it's the all jaffe issue the al jaffe but it, they call it the all jaffe issue and it was his last fold in yeah longest streak i think he's 99 as of this recording Mr. Jaffe is still going, but he um, he did his last fold in for Mad Magazine issue fourteen. I got two copies of it. And Keith, we talked about this on the last episode. Why did I buy two copies? 
to do the fold in. Absolutely. I, mean, I got to keep and, one in mint condition. I got to fold yeah, in one, if it's right? It's his last one. You got to keep a, a, a mint brilliant. copy. What about you? What was your first uh what was your first Mad Magazine that you remember I, really uh, jumping into? That's a tricky one um because I don't recall Superman. No, I think it goes back a little further and the and the thing is that, you know, it was my uncle who I, I think introduced me to comic books because I remember there were some like Iron Man comic books I remember and different things. And when I would go visit, uh, he you know, he he would take me. We'd go to the newsstand. He'd buy me all these different comic books. And Mad Magazine came along somewhere in there. I, I have an early remember of one cuckoo flew over the rest, which was the Jack Nicholson. <laughs> the movie. Titles are just brilliant. It's brilliant. They? But that's one of my earliest memories of Mad Magazine. So let's call that my first Mad Magazine. It's probably you know what was that nineteen seventy four maybe. Yeah, yeah. Sounds We're going to go right. like early 70s, early mid-70s, somewhere around there. But one thing I, I have a vivid memory of is sitting in a big comfy chair in my home in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and reading the <laughs> Star Black, the motion gah, picture. <laughs> so this would have been like 1979. I, I just remember tears pouring out of my eyes. I was laughing so hard, and my brother was sitting there, and he was like, What? I'm like, you have no idea. Like, you have not this, this, this. And I'm, he's like, whatever. And he's like watching sports, you know, or something like that. And I'm just laughing so hard. And what I did was recently I revisited it. I checked it out again. I thought, does it hold up? Does the comedy hold up? Is it still as funny as I remember? Or was it just because I was a kid and I was reading things? I was, you know, there were words in there I probably shouldn't have been reading. And, yes. and you know, and it's like, does and they would always do the, you know, the care, you know, the the pound sign and the exclamation mark and the squiggly, you know, like for curse words, they always put those in. And they most of the times, it. I would fill in the blanks because right, I right because in your brain, some of those right, words. But your your brain filled in. It was like Match Game, Dick D. Bartolo on Match Game. Like your brain would fill yeah. in what they couldn't do, right? And right. what you could come up with was probably infinitely more <laughs> strange than what they could come up with. But I went back and revisited it, and it holds up i'm laughing yeah. and crying again i was like it is so funny yeah They're, absolutely yeah. i mean rereading the 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 three indiana jones um oh, the in banana jones cover today <laughs> uh, sorry the in banana jones uh spoofs <laughs> that we're gonna cover today um i mean I, I i i think i mentioned it last last segment that we did there was a couple of moments that i just i laughed out loud like yeah. i really just laughed out loud yeah because and, i some have of the, not done reading no. something in a very long time and that, it felt pretty good to be that's honest. trick it's tricky to do that in comic book or in writing you know you see something on tv the visuals and the sound effects and everything but to to have something in print with art that makes yeah. you literally laugh out loud makes you literally lol you are dead on the money my brother that's what Mad Magazine does, and it still does. I'm going over these things, and some of, now some of them are like groaners, you know. There's some puns and things, You're like okay, yeah. you know that that's in there too. But it's almost like the movie Airplane, the the <laughs> the, the, the joke mileage, Which is brilliant. <laughs> yes. But like some of them are groaners, but the the per you know the jokes per minute. It, it's just that you know. It, my favorite joke in Airplane. Sorry, I have to say this. <laughs> of course, and it, it cracks fits me in perfectly. Up every time. Every time is when um, when he says, uh, you, "You think I'm bad? You, you, you should you should see the guy uh, next to me. He thinks he thinks he's Ethel Merman." And <laughs> Ethel Merman gets out of bed and starts saying, "You'll be swell. You'll be great." Uh, oh, it is oh. the funniest. We're so it old. is one of the funniest jokes, uh, really, and it makes me laugh every single time I see it. Oh, what's his problem? Oh, it's Lieutenant Hurwitz. Oh, no. Severe shell shock. Thinks he's Ethel Merman. You'll be swell. You'll be great. Gonna have the whole world on a plate. Starting here. Start now. Honey, everything's coming up. War is hell. It is. We're so old. That's a thing. People are like, Ethel, what? <laughs> you know, but it is brilliant. But and that's something that would come from Mad Magazine. And obviously, the writers of Airplane were inspired by Mad Magazine yeah, uh, as sure. well. You can see that. But as you go through it, we'll talk about these. But yeah, and, and, and we'll talk about the plot holes, too. Because things that we find plot holes in the movie, they obviously, and we talked about this with Dick D, is that 
they that's that was the goal to them. Oh, absolutely. That as was the they, goal. As soon as something, and also reviews, like like Dick yeah. D mentioned too, like uh, you know, if people are mentioning certain things, if 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 uh, if they're mentioning some stuff in their reviews, they ran with that. He said that was gold to Big them. Yeah. And you know, um, I, I I can't imagine just sitting there and and your first experience of Raiders of the Lost Ark is to just take notes and to not really fully <laughs> enjoy the movie. It, it It's kind of almost a bit sad in a way. It's almost like George Lucas said he can never, like he's, he'll never be able to see star Wars, you know? Uh, yeah. But I kind of get, it. well, okay. I get a little bit of that, but I also get a little bit the fact that they did love the movies. Oh, absolutely. Because there is a love affair almost that's going on with these because We'll talk about this because I think we're going to talk about four issues today. The three, the first three, I think there is a love affair. Maybe not so much the third. Definitely the first two. Uh, but the fourth one, maybe not so much. Um, no. But there, not. but I think early on when you see the, you talked about Superman, the movie, you know, Star Roars. Uh, they did Jaws parodies. They did everything. I, I think they loved the movie. I think there had to be a love of the movie to be able to make fun of it. And we do that sure. on the IndieCast all the time. Every yeah. time we, we all get together, we did this on episode 300, we get together, and it's almost like that sense of we love it so we can make fun of it. You can't make fun of it if you don't love it. <laughs> you know, it's like a parent. Right. I can make fun of my parent, but you can't make fun of my parent. <laughs> we earned no, the absolutely. right to make fun of it, and almost like the Mad Riders kind of did too. So, um yeah, that's our experiences with Mad. Uh, what, hey, look, we've been talking about this. Why don't we uh, get to the, the spoofs themselves? Let's do it. Yeah, it wouldn't be a further adventures segment without Wilhelm Ina. Wilhelmina. <laughs> She's, we're going to spoil them. It's in Banana Jones. Uh, and the Raiders of a Lost Art. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just I know, Raiders I know. of a Lost Art. <laughs> <laughs> Back before it's, they returned. It's like the DVD cover. They added Indiana Jones and the Raiders. No. They should, do you think Raiders. if they did a reprint of these, would it be in <laughs> Banana Jones and the Raiders of a Lost Art or something? Yeah, I know. Um, we're going to talk about this. Keith, um, let's get a little bit of, uh, let's, let's do the creator rundown uh, on yeah. this first one. Let's do it. Uh, so, of course, yeah, we got Raiders of a Lost Art. And if you want, again, want to hear about the mystery uh, of, of how they picked that title, listen to our last segment with Dick DiBartolo. Uh, yeah. That originally appeared in issue 228 uh, with Frank Jacobs and Jack Davis. It ran for seven pages. And we'll also get to that a little later uh, about the page amount uh, dedicated to some of these. The cover art was by Jack Rickard, Alfred E. Newman. As the Chachapoyan idol, uh, <laughs> that UPC. The, okay, he was the mascot for Mad Magazine. If you don't know that, he was the mad mascot for Mad Magazine. What me worry? That's you know, exactly. they, hence the reference earlier. We're so old, uh, but yeah, Alfred pops up on all the covers uh, as we go through these. Obviously, all the first three written by the great Dick D. Uh, we talked to him last time. Um, this cover, Keith. Look, if you're an Indiana Jones fan, and you don't have this. You want this, right? Yes. That's a great cover. It's a great cover. It's and the iconic talked, scene where he's taking the idol. <laughs> the and idol we've Alfred talked Newman. a thousand times about yeah. the likeness of Harrison Ford. Yeah. This one isn't too bad. No, it's and he drew the hat. Bad. He loved the hat. You know, the hat looks great. I yeah. mean, of course, Alfred E. Newman as, uh, as, as the Chacha Point idol is just classic. You couldn't have done anything better. No. Maybe you could have had him be the boulder. His head is the boulder. I love him as the no, I love him as the Chacha Point idol. But I think the Chacha Point idol is definitely the, the, the way to go here. I haven't done the digging on this. I don't know how many of the UPC symbols over the years they've worked into the comedy. But this one they worked the UPC symbol into the comedy snakes that died, making Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's all the straight lines. And it's all the straight lines. I mean, and, and honestly, Brilliant. Brilliant. there's par- probably half of the people that, 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 uh, that read that joke. Didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you know I don't I mean? remember it's until like... recently. I was probably one of them. I don't think I got it at the time. Let's talk about the characters. We've got in banana Jones, Marion, but not Marion. M A R R Y I N. They told the future a little bit there. I mean, he yep. is uh, marrying her eventually. Eventually, bollocks. 
Bollocks. <laughs> my so fun. good. Professor Marcus Crony. Mucus Crony. <laughs> Mucus Profe- Crony. Oh, Professor Mucus. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, sorry. Oh. We're actually recording a He's bunch so of these He's so incredibly dumb time. that he doesn't appear in any outdoor scenes for fear he might be mistaken for a sand dune. That is brilliant. Except, you know, when he when he appears in, in, in uh, Last Crusade. He's ben. sitting on a sand dune, too. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm so tired. We've recorded a bunch of these. Um, uh, Toad, instead of Tote. Uh, the, the art is brilliant. It's uh, so good. Jack Davis, the art is brilliant. And Salam. Salam. Um, yes. He's an Arab who digs for ancient artifacts, not oil, which should tell you just how unbelievable this film is. That's the thing is <laughs> oh, we we said about <laughs> the the art. There's so many things hidden. There's like hidden monkeys. There's like monkeys. There's a martini glass. Yeah, honestly, I, like uh, I want this almost like this original art as a poster, and I'm wondering yeah. if it's in the Billy Ireland collection. <laughs> when I go down to Columbus, I should go back through and see if there's some of the original art. Uh, Marion is throwing a punch. She's also holding like multiple drinks. There's so much going on here, and yeah. honestly, for me, I wanted to mention it before, but this is like really for me the first time I was exposed to things like Easter eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you just start yep. digging in. You're like, you, you could you could read this story yeah. and go back and then just look at all the art. I mean, look at all the darts coming out of Indy's hat. He's covered in webs. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, it's yeah. it's great. One of the snakes uh, is is wrapped around the whip and is in love. I mean, is it, one of the snakes <sighs> is in love with the whip. It's brilliant. A little heart coming I mean, that's out, a, right. That's just such an evolution of the joke uh, right. when he's in the Well of the Souls and Marion burns his whip because she thinks it's a snake. That's right, a great... Right. That's just a great joke. And there's also um, the Jack Davis staple of, of somebody getting punched and their tooth flying out. So you get the like the full oh, tooth yeah. with the roots coming out. Um, it's amazing. But we get all we're introduced to all these characters coming in. And this is the longest of the Indiana Jones spoofs. Seven pages. Seven pages. That yeah. we go through this. And we start in the South American jungle in 1936. We talked about this on the last episode that uh, the reference of Roosevelt and Joe DiMaggio that's the Frank Jacobs part. Dick said he didn't know anything about, you know, Frank Jacobs went back to 1936 and found out some cool things as Indy's running from the the boulder. And there's still darts flying out. I don't know why there's still darts flying out. (laughs) I Um, mean, it's, it's, it's great. And of course, when Bollocks shows up and he takes the, the idol, it really is the Alfred E. Newman head. It still is. Yeah, still. Um, uh, But something interesting here um, that they, um, they start off in 1936, which we do in the movie too. But then, once we get back to um, the university, and of course we have a great shot of the uh, the, the student with the love you uh, above her mm-hmm. uh, on her eyelids. That's just great. It says it's 1937. Yeah, which is quite interesting. And I wonder if there was uh, if there was ever anything that they got uh, that maybe mentioned that it should be dated 1937. No, we didn't ask that the last time, so that's an interesting nope. thing that might be uh, by, might be lost to time. Uh, what we do get, though, is, um, man, I think some spot-on references. I mean, obviously, these are caricatures uh, that you go through, but definitely spot-on. Harrison's still in his Indiana Jones gear. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, not the Indiana Jones professor gear, but he's still got the whip and everything because they use the whip a lot. Um, it's in his hands in every panel. <laughs> right. It's like- it's, that's the big thing. And uh, is it William Hookins? Yeah, William Hookins. Um, great reference to him there. Um, I love no, the fact that he played Major Eaton. Yep, we love the you know the Nazis have been. We just got a German communique yesterday, and the the Nazis have been looking at this for two years. You you've been doing this for two. Years. <laughs> you just found out about yesterday. No wonder we're in I trouble. Mean, ever since we talked to 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 Dick, uh, I can now imagine. Him watching the movie, and with every line, he's just writing some stuff down. Yeah, just brilliant stuff. You um, know what I mean? Yeah, the scene with him and Marion, as soon as he walks into the bar in Nepal, she cold cocks him. And it's the the characters, the dollar sign, the pound sign, percentage sign, the ampersand. They're just <laughs> You could fill in in your brain what goes on. Um, and, and just he go loses through. a tooth too. <laughs> he loses a tooth that goes out the you know Jack Davis the staple. And then I love when they're in the desert and he's got the the disguise on, but he also has his Indiana Jones hat on the fedora. Oh yes, yes. It's it's. I mean, 
it's, it's some very touchy stuff. If you go back when when Indy's on the plane to Nepal, the 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 Nazi sitting in front of him who's reading like Mein Kampf, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it, it just has yeah. the Iron Cross and like the swastika like yeah. buttons, and it's just like, oh my goodness, yeah. like a lot of this stuff. I don't know if it would fly today. You know, Indy's reading Treasure Island. There's a guy, you know, hurling in a barf bag behind him. <laughs> barf bags seem to show up in Mad Magazine all the time. A lot. Um, yeah, it's a it's a, a great parody. Uh, instead, you know, riding the horse to go chase the truck uh, with the Nazis and the Ark in it, he rides Salah. <laughs> it's just, uh, just true. Brilliant. Uh, or you brilliant. know, or should I say, Salam? Uh, yeah, this. exactly. They also had a pretty good joke with uh, when, when Indy goes into the map room. And uh, oh, and great Salam joke. says, yeah, "Can I lend you a hand?" And he goes, "I don't need a hand. I'll do it solo." And he's like, "That's the most shameless plug I've ever heard." <laughs> Working the it's Star just Wars, so end. funny. Well, Dick D also did Star Wars. These, yeah, exactly, exactly. And if you guys don't have these, I mean, just just even going over them again now, and I mean, we read them, um, you know, in preparation for for this segment. But like yeah. going through them again, it's like these things are just classic. If you haven't read these, first of all, the art is great, uh, and, right. and, but these the, the, there is just a joke. Every single, I mean, multiple jokes. Every yeah, single it's like panel. airplane. You're, uh, and you're even at the lie. end when he meets it back up with the, you know, the guys from Washington. He he's got his full Indiana Jones gear on, the whip, the hat, and he's got all the darts still sticking out of him. Yeah, which I don't know why he would still have that, but it, it's it's brilliant. And then of course we're gonna go right into in Banana Jones and the Temple of Goons. <laughs> Oh. Issue number two fifty with Jack Davis. This one ran for five pages. We've down from less. seven. Yeah, but this that was, was uh, Dick D said this was about the standard. Yeah, so yeah, Ra- yeah. So Raiders got a little bit more. Exactly, and that cover art by Richard Williams. Oh man, that is just for me. It is legendary <laughs> cover art. I love that. Uh, I like Jones the first couple- one better, but I think your this was special, more special to you. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. There's just something so funny, like when you have those two titles, Indiana Jones and Splash, and then uh, and there's Alfred E. Newman just holding like a huge mermaid's tail. <laughs> uh, it cracks me up every time. Right, I love but it. with the machete, so he's obviously cut it off, and he's going right. to fry it up in a pan, he's which is behind him. Uh, right, which is just brilliant. And wrong. Uh, brilliant and wrong on so many levels. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, last time we had him, we had Alfred E. Newman as the as the idol. This time we have him as In Banana himself, and <laughs> with kind of Darahana, as we talked about. And I mean, we got one of the greatest uh, one of the greatest sidekicks uh, ever, mm-hmm. Short Round, who is uh, Short Stack. <laughs> <laughs> Short Stack. Dick D loved him some pancakes. He did Pancake Palace. What? So funny, <laughs> so funny. Now I want um, pancakes. Oh my god! <laughs> but again, that splash page by Jack Davis. Um, you know, we've got Willie. We got you know. Well, is it silly? Silly. I think yep. in this one, yeah. And it just, uh, it just again, like you mentioned the last one, so much going on in the panels. I can't even. I, I could stare at this thing all day. Yeah, and probably still not find everything that's in it. I would it, love it's the it's absolutely. the fight at, at at the club Obi Wan at the beginning, but yeah. Yes, and there really is a ton of stuff going on. Like it's just guys fighting and like a knife going over Indy's head. Yeah, and like you know, the, of course the uh, the 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 shish kebab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like and and it's just brilliant. It's just so good. Um, and I mean, just then to have the 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 title in Banana Jones and the Temple of Goons over. Um, over uh, when 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 they come out of Club Obi Wan and and it's just it's great, yeah. um, but it does suffer a bit from you. Definitely feel like they are moving this one along a bit. Within three panels, we go from going out of the window Club Obi Wan to the car with short stack to the airplane. Um, it's right. it's so fast, and again with seven pages for Raiders, and then five here. It's it's being, you know, cut down dramatically. But again, this was the typical Mad Magazine that, that Dick right. had mentioned, five pages. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit tighter, but uh, the jokes are coming fast and furious. I think a little more puns in this one. Tons Would you of see? puns yeah. in this one. A yeah, lot not so much as plot holes. They're, they they do reference the plot holes, but a little bit more play on words and puns in this one. I still I, th- I still think Raiders is my favorite of all of them. 
Um, yeah, I think so too. I think Raiders is is definitely the best one. Um, yeah. But uh, this one's definitely a lot of fun. I mean, they definitely talk a ton about pancakes. I mean, Pancake Palace and Short Stack, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just. Um, th- one of the best jokes is when uh, Chatter Lal, um, actually, what is his name in this? I think his name is Chatter Lowe, yeah. <laughs> the Prime Minister of Pancake. Yeah, Chatter um, Lowe, Prime Minister they're of Pancake. Talking, yes, they're talking about... Can you speak um, a little louder? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so good. It's so it's such a subtle joke, but it's uh, it's great. Um, I ho- He says, I hope you enjoy our specialty, monkey brains. Um, they used to serve politician brains, but they weren't very filling. <laughs> I mean, that's just... There's the political satire coming in too, so but they true. do spend a lot of time on like the bug jokes and what they're eating because obviously that was the 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 uh, you know part of the expression you know, bug nuts craziest scene of Temple of Doom was yeah, it's the, what a lot the of bug scene. Remember. That yeah, is so scene. yeah, that so is take you back scene, to you know? that time. That's what they played up. So there's a lot of panels devoted to jokes on that. Even you know Willie. Um, they're trying to rescue Indiana Jones or in Banana Jones and Short Stack. Uh, Yipe in Banana, why are there 50 million disgusting bugs down here? They're hiding from the chef. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant joke. Uh, and I, I think I stuff. mentioned the, the the last segment too when uh, Mola Ram. Moldy Ram? Uh, Moldy Ram is it? <laughs> <laughs> Moldy the, the thingy rum. ritual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's ripping out his thingy. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> They're worshiping the god Kali. They're, those petals they're throwing are from his favorite blossom, the Kali flower. <laughs> okay. They're it's puns. Just, I, mean, I guess puns. if you're back in the day, look, this tickled our fancy back in the day, right? I don't know. We yes. were. You watch TV now, there's Netflix. There, look, everything. There's nothing. There. We talked about this on the last episode. There are no standards and practices anymore. So kids today are exposed to everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Back in the day, you could make like a little, you know, like Three's Company (laughs) made us laugh because, you know, the double entendres and Three's Company, you know, things like that. So keep in mind, this is the era of that time where, you know, things weren't as overt as they are now. We talk about Match Game. Match Game back in the 70s. They couldn't say certain things, so they had to come up with euphemisms, Right. There was a comedy. There was a there was a technique to it. Now on the Alec Baldwin version, they can say whatever they want, and right. there's no right. there's no filter. There's no comedy. There's no letting the viewer come up with their own jokes. So I think uh, this is of an era. This is of a very different comedy era, and I think we've lost that. And it's interesting to revisit it. For sure. So yeah, new like a kid reading this now, probably like, oh, really. Yeah, well, wah, wah. yeah, but, but for us, yeah, I think I think we we've, we've lost a little something there. Um, I, look, I thought Jack Davis's art I think is amazing. I think he just got everybody right. Uh, there's everything is so f- the panels are so full of everything, and Spielberg and Lucas make an appearance. Yeah, we talked so a little great. bit about that the, the last time. Um, Lucas had sent Dick D. Uh, a letter about Star Wars, <laughs> a complimentary letter to Star Wars, Star Roars. Um, it's funny. And one of my favorite lines of this is the second to last panel where he says, where In Banana Jones says, now if I could only escape my contract, I wouldn't have to make In Banana Jones 3. Well, he didn't escape his contract because they did make In Banana Jones 3. <laughs> yes, they certainly and did. That was, in epi- uh, that was in issue 291 of Mad Magazine featuring... That was the special Mutant Ninja Turtles issue. Yeah. Up until this point, um, In Banana uh, <laughs> had gotten his 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 own cover. Um, yeah. Now he's just sort of a side um, note, especially when compared to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Which, oh, an uh, okay which, cover. An okay cover. Not, it's an okay cover. Not yeah. as iconic as the others. The cover art uh, for that one was by Sam Viviano. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I I like it, but of course, I would have I wouldn't have minded to to have um, y- you know, to to kind of to make the trilogy complete, so to speak. So you have three distinct covers for I agree. those spoofs. And I, I snagged really this one off that. eBay. I snagged this one off eBay. The other ones I had, um, this one I would not have grabbed off the newsstand back in the day. Yeah, it's a I, lot I don't of white space. 
No, there's a lot of white space. There's a lot of dead space on the issue. And it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Look, they're cool, but they're not Indiana Jones. Yeah, so yeah. apparently at this point, December 1989 cover date, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bigger than Indiana Jones? Hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Where, really? Definitely. All right. Yo, All right. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. Um, I mean – Right. I don't know. I, I just remember like everything was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at that time. Everything. I mean, for for me, yeah, Indiana Jones. Uh, you know, I went to McDonald's. I got the tapes. I got the water bottles when Last Crusade came out. You, if you remember that that um, mm-hmm. that that uh, scratch off game that they had on the water bottles that you win, you know, prizes and stuff. So, I got had it downstairs in the lair. Yep. 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 I I I, I loved Indiana Jones then. Um, I wasn't as into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a couple of the figures, and I actually the first few things I had were those original comics. Um, and then I occasionally watched the the, the animated series, but everyone I knew was into Turtles at that time. All right, Every- fair enough. So Indiana Jones, yeah. No Holds Barred, and the Wonder Years. The Wonder <laughs> Years, yeah, <laughs> that puts you back in the turtle time. issue. Yeah, uh, and Alfred E. Newman is Alfredo. He yes. takes the the point on the cover, but there is an Indiana Jones reference. He's there as Indiano, <laughs> Indiano. Okay. Um, and he's missing and a tooth, of course. He's missing <laughs> a tooth, of, oh, of course. And four pages, Keith. Yeah, yeah. That's how you could definitely tell things were either either space was tight, or mm. they just didn't really maybe care as much, which is kind of shocking because. Last Crusade, arguably one of the best Indiana Jones movies. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it reverted back states. to form. I think we put it. Yeah, I think we put it up there. Well, it's got Sean Connery in it, right? Right. Exactly. Oh, and they they definitely tore him up in this one. Uh, they it, did. <laughs> it's Indiana Jones and his last crude days uh, with Mort Mort Drucker now taking yes. over artwork for this. Uh, obviously, uh, Dick D wrote the story. Artist Mort Drucker. Um, I think more Drucker's Harrison Ford maybe a little closer. Definitely, a Sean Connery is dead Sean on. Sean Connery is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's but, right mean, out of uh, James Bond. Even before we get to that, you know, you, you you love how they always named the departments like before they uh, before you. you oh you yeah, the, the little subheading the, there. The the subheadings right. The Ford Gone Conclusion Department. <laughs> uh, and 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 if you read that, they they talk about like 1989 a bit and just how much. Uh, was going on uh, in cinema. 1989 was the year of the summer blockbusters. Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. There was just tons of stuff going on. Um, so maybe that was just another reason that uh, Indy sort of took uh, a back seat. He did take a back seat in this one. Um, yeah, it just kind of goes through. This isn't my total... <sighs> This isn't my favorite. I mean, it, it blows through. There's some there's some cool gags in it. I mean... It's so short. Yeah, I mean, we've got Sir Steven of Spielberg, yeah, which is yeah. kind of funny uh, there. And then we talked uh, the last episode with Dick D, that tribute to Danny Kaye from The Court Jester. Um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, warning the chalice from the palace, uh, the flagon with the dragon, the vessel with the pestle at the end. Uh, that's... You know, that's definitely more Drucker. He had mentioned that too. So, um, small it, look into the future, too. If you, uh, right after they, uh, uh about to go into the, uh, Venice, uh, tunnels, yeah. you could see one of the rats is wearing Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> so, that, I don't know if that was a bit, uh, yeah, uh, very, very interesting there. Yeah. It's, it's, it moves so fast, though. There, there are jokes. They're interesting jokes. I don't know if it's fleshed out as much as the other two. Uh, this is my. I'm going to say the th- of the four. This is this is the third. I think they go in order, right? Or I think they go one, two, three, four. Yeah, for I, me, yeah, for me too. For yeah, me it too. seems like they just did this to do it. Um, again, there's still some funny jokes in there. There's a, a really cool thing where they drink the. You know, Sean Connery revert, reverts back to his James Bond look. After yes. he drinks from yeah, the that's, grail. That's, right. that's, that's right. funny. Uh, there's a Will of Fortune reference when he's trying to spell out Jehovah. Uh, as it goes through, he wants to buy a vowel. Um, 
it's he so fast. Off, he switches the off switch for the whirling blades. Yeah. We don't get a leap from the lion's head. No. It's just over so quickly. It's over so it's fast. It's over so quickly. I mean, you could even say the same thing about the, the Temple of Doom um, spoof is that – it moves um, fast. You know, you know, you, you, it moves really fast. I mean, it it it, it kind of moves at the same pace for the first few pages, and then abruptly, like suddenly, it's Mola Ram and the Rock Crusher. You don't even get the rope bridge. Right. Um. You know, you you get none of that stuff. So, and I think even here, um, they just decided, all right, let's just let's just uh, wrap it up. Yeah, it feels rushed. So I'm just okay with that one. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's the best of and them. And the art's great. The art is the really art is great. fantastic. The art is fantastic. Um, I would absolutely want to own some of this artwork as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, this one doesn't really sort of uh, um, scratch the itch. No, it doesn't stick out in the memory banks for me as much oh. either. So, But it's nice that we have it. Mad issue number 490. We've got multiple parodies. Let's talk about these. Um, let's uh, Let's talk about that cover. Yeah, let's just check out uh, Mad number 490 now. We've got multiple parodies uh, in this one. The cover art... Mark Fredrickson, uh, Alfred E. Newman once again as Indiana, or of course. Indiana, of course. Um, I actually own this issue, of course. It's back home in the States, um, but I'm looking at it digitally, and yeah, this I, I kind of like this one. It, it, it sort of reminds, definitely reminds me of how Harrison sort of fit into his Indiana Jones costume a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. It definitely touches on that. Like I, I thought he, I mean, he, Harrison was in awesome shape for crystal skull. Let's not, you know, but th- there was something that looked slightly baggy off about some of his clothes or, or, or you know, the, the jacket and so on, maybe a bit big or, and I definitely feel like this cover nailed um, the crystal skull look. I, I like that aspect of it that you've got Alfred E. Newman in this oversized Indiana Jones costume. It's just like nothing yes. fits. Everything's just, you know, baggy on him. The the entire cover is filled with the vines crawling and he's in the, yes. you know, Akator and everything. It's very cool. Um Indiana Jones splashed right across the cover. Mad, the logo is with the Indiana Jones color, the the font color. Yes. Uh, you know, the orange, yellow, white and inside bonus poster of Indy's earliest adventure. So they are devoting this issue to Indiana Jones. I love that because it's such a, a deviation from issue 291 where Indiana Jones felt like they just had to they had to do it because they had to do it. This one felt like, oh, it's Indiana Jones. We got to do something. And they did it. Yeah. Amazing. Man, really harsh. Yes. In this yes. issue. I don't. That's like. Old Mad, like Mad Magazine, the Mad Magazine I knew, was like a loving tribute to some of these things. Oh, they spare no expense this on, one, on the insults here. No, it's, it, it feels almost mean-spirited uh, on a lot of aspects. Uh, let's talk about that first. There's, and by the way, what I don't like is that there's no spoof of Crystal Skull. They don't there's, do that. Yeah, there's no actual spoof of it. No, so um, I don't even get that at all. So that, take that, throw it right out. There's a bunch of Indiana Jones material, comedic material in it. Um, the first one is the top secret Indiana Jones memo from George Lucas to Steven Spielberg. Um, I want to get your thoughts on this first. Uh, some, Well, go ahead and give us the creators uh, on this, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, the script was by David Shane. The art was by Jack Syracuse. Um, and again, like what we talked about, it's just a fake letter of ideas for the Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull movie. Um, and in the background, you know, I mean, the art is pretty good. You, you have Steven Spielberg sitting there with this letter. Yeah. Um, you have the, you, the the cover to Jaws in the back. You have uh, the, the splash page to Raiders of the Lost Art in the back. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, but the letter, Wow. The letter is pretty. There's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's a, it's some of it can be a bit disturbing and a bit like wow they really went over the top here. Yeah. So it's a, as if George Lucas wrote it to Steven Spielberg. Look, if you hate Crystal Skull, you're gonna love this. These two pages yeah. in Mad Magazine. Oh my um, I don't even know where to begin with this. I mean, it talks about man. They they rip on Shia LaBeouf. Uh, they rip on Harrison Ford's age. Uh, they rip on Harrison Ford's wife. In... Oh yeah, that the, the picture attached to the uh, to the letter. Yeah, I don't know that, this. That, this that, one seems one. this one seems really too mean spirited to me. It's but they actually called her the the, the alien. 
Well, yeah, that too. The long neck, leathery face, bulging eyes. I had the boys at ILM work something up. See attached sketch, and it's clearly. Mm. Uh yeah we we know who it is yeah. we know who it is good news Karen Allen said she got room in her busy schedule to reprise the role of Marion Ravenwood from Raiders assuming she can get another waitress to cover her shifts at Ruby Tuesday ouch ah rough, uh, rough you know rough. when I direct I always like to cast at least one truly mediocre actor like Mark Hamill Jake Lloyd or Hayden Christensen that way I can uh, be sure his performance doesn't distract the audience from all the cool special effects ouch I mean I don't know I'm I'm not a fan of this one. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't. It didn't really make me laugh. I it, nope. it was mostly it was mostly for, it was mostly like oh, it's venomous, man. It's mostly yeah. for yeah. It's mostly like um, shock value, but not in a good way. No, and I think that's where Mad Magazine maybe went because look, I gave up on Mad years ago. I think you hit those windows where. We wa- we watch certain things, we read certain things. You're not going to read Mag- Mad Magazine for you know almost 600 issues. It's just not going to happen. No. Um, so I probably uh, somewhere in the 80s, I probably bailed out. Um, obviously before the the <laughs> the uh, Last Crusade spoof because I had to get that off eBay. Um, but I look if this is where it went, okay. It just seemed really mean spirited to me. Too mean spirited. I- I agree. I mean, I, I also wasn't found funny. out maybe a re- no, it wasn't funny. It was just mostly like oh, oh, every time you read it, ooh, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas when I was reading the the other three, you know, I was like 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 I mentioned, I was laughing out loud in certain spots, and it just seemed like more, really more satire and not insulting, and almost like you know what I mean? It just yeah. seemed a bit like yeah, a bit it, it a bit mean spirited. Like There's a said. good Nixon gag in it because <laughs> yeah. Nixon's always a good punching bag. Of course, but you know when you go outside of that, you got to be you got to you know kid gloves on some of this stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that one. How about Embryonic Jones and the Temple of Womb? Who what, who are the creators on that one? <laughs> so, okay, the script was by Desmond De- Devlin. Uh, the art by Richard Williams. It's a parody of an Indiana Jones movie poster, of uh-huh. course. But it's uh-huh. just weird, man. It's a weird one. You know, uh, see Embryonic Jones as he dodges a. <laughs> As, as he dodges a needle, <laughs> an amniocentesis needle. I got, I think the only funny thing was thrill to Miss, Mrs. Jones' unstoppable midnight craving for a meatball sub. It's a meatball that, chasing him like a boulder. That one's kind of funny. It's cute. That one's kind of funny. But I mean, it's just like uh, you look at this and it's just, just like date. a. Yeah, he's in action. He's in danger. He's in utero. Oh my god, it's so weird. Just it's date just as so embryonic weird. Jones explores his mom's secret chamber. It's so weird. It's I so. I don't uh, even know where to go with this one. Yeah. I, can we just move on? That one's too disturbing for I mean, me. Uh, how about the next one up? Hold on. It is a pullout poster. You know, oh. They did that thing. I wouldn't even have to say. Oh, nope. Right, anyway, that one's right. not going up on my wall. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's just weird. Yeah. I don't know, man. I Yeah, not a fan. How about our not- next segment? Yeah, the next one is 10 Things Indiana Jones Hates More Than Snakes. The script and art by John Caldwell. And it, it's a look at other things that might uh, bug Indiana Jones. This one seems a little bit more mad-like. Yeah. Um, it's okay. And the art is kind of funny. It's definitely, there's there's some moments where it's like, uh, you definitely see that they're going a, a bit more of the older Indiana Jones route. Mm-hmm. Um, this one's kind of funnier. For sure, um, a little bit saltier language. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's stuff like the sad things that bug Indiana Jones. The sad fact that Fabrice stopped working on the old chapeau about fifteen years ago. Yeah, he keeps um, he keeps getting Idaho Jones's phone bills, no matter how often he complains. I mean, some of them are funny. Mm. Some of them are like, eh. It, it's it it didn't really hit the mark for me either nope and how about what the heck is the difference uh we go back to our first (laughs) cover (laughs) someone was inspired by highlights you know if anybody okay remember the highlights made you a dentist yeah yeah right right, right. office or the doctor's office in the 80s you know highlights okay yeah it's like here's this picture and then what do we change in the next picture right you have to circle nine things that are different it's the original raiders of the lost art Raiders of the Lost Art cover. I don't know. I found them all like in 10 seconds. Yeah. It's again, Raiders, but yeah, like Raiders of the Crystal Skull and like, eh, okay. 
And they Fun. put they stuck the tongue out on Alfred E. Newman. It's I don't know. It feels yeah, like filler. It has some extra fingers here and there. It's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was Whip is longer. I mean, does it, yeah. Yeah. Does it get better than Al Jaffe, though? The legend that is Al Jaffe. The Mad Fold In by Al Jaffe. Yeah. A little bit of a political satire, too. <laughs> political satire and mad? <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, ne- that never happens. Taking a jo- uh, jab uh, at, at Mr. McCain? I don't know. Let's. Here's the thing. We lost John McCain. I don't know. It feels... <laughs> Looking back on it now, it feels a little mean spirited because he's not with yeah. us anymore. I guess yeah. at the time, when you go back to two thousand eight, a John McCain joke probably works. Yeah, uh, not so much now. I don't know, but the artwork's kind of cool. Artwork is cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, and when you fold it, the artwork is also cool. But but uh, it is a sure. you know, a lot of this stuff. This issue just feels overall. Overall, a bit mean spirited, a bit. It definitely is a departure. I guess you could kind of compare it to what Crystal Skull was to the original Indiana Jones that's trilogy. Exactly, it definitely feels different. Yes, that's exactly uh, what I feel like when people talk about on the IndyCast when, when people get, or you know, you see Indiana Jones uh, groups and things. There's so much hatred for the movie. And you and I, look, we know it's got its faults, but definitely. deep down, we love it. Yes. And I feel that way on the first three issues of Mad that covered Indiana Jones was that they liked the source material. They loved the source material and they were having they fun, had fun with, with it. it. Yeah. yeah. This one feels more mean spirited. Yeah. Like they, they knew everybody uh, didn't like it. So they jumped on that sort yep. of bandwagon and mm-hmm. just said, you know what? This Ride is, it. is going to make people really, um, I don't know. No, this is gonna. This is gonna, are gonna hit, agree with us here. Yeah, this is gonna hit a few buttons. So let, look, everybody hates this movie, and it and it's weird, and Shia LaBeouf's not, whatever. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't have a, a good feeling it. about this one. I love the cover. Cover's great. And Cover's when you open great. it up, you're like, oh, okay, that's a little harsh, especially that memo. Thing. <laughs> that was... I just wish they could have given us a spoof, a satire. Why not? Five pages. Five pages. Yeah. Five pages. It That's felt like Mad idiot. moved away from what Mad used to be. Yeah, and instead they, they at least in that issue, I haven't I, I haven't read any of the issues around uh, uh, that either. time. Nope. I bought that one specifically for the Indiana Jones cover. Right. Um you know, I don't know if any of the other issues were like that, but this one definitely I mean, even in some of the other stuff uh in, in, in the issue, um is a bit mean spirited. It just it just wasn't funny. It just no. felt a bit more like bullying a bit. Yeah. And it felt like they needed Dick D to come in and maybe finish off the quadrilogy. Maybe he still needs to. I think he still does. That'd be cool. Cause he's funny. <laughs> and this wasn't. There. So, uh, to wrap things up, um, one, two, three, and four in that order, right? For you one, as two, well? three, four. That's, that's, that's how I would, uh, that's how I definitely rank it as well. Yeah. The, uh, the Raiders of a lost art in banana Jones, that is, uh, I th- those definitely those first two are amazing. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, but again, fun as, as 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 uh, Temple of Goons ends, you're sort of like, oh, okay, that's a bit. I mean, especially if you're reading uh, all three back to back, you could definitely see how they're starting to um, wrap thing, wrap things up <laughs> quicker and quicker. As, Lose interest. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Uh, Indiana Jones five. I don't know where Mad Magazine is going to be at that point. Well, there isn't going to be an AD5, so there isn't going to be (laughs) – they don't need to do anything. Perfect. It would be one page. (laughs) It's Disney. Of course they're going to do it. We've Uh, talked about this. Of course they're going to do it. So look – Be sure to tune into our Dark Knight Rises podcast. (laughs) I would love if there is an Indiana Jones 5 and Dick D. Bartolo comes back for In Banana Jones 5 – Dot, 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 whatever that adventure is. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. I would I would be up for that for sure. Okay, that's it for the day then. Well, there you have it. Our reviews of Mad Magazine's takes on the four indie flicks. You know what we think, but we want to know what you think. Yeah, exactly. Be sure to drop us a line, thefurtheradventures at gmail.com. Record an MP3, send it along. And check us out on Facebook at The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, where you will find an episode guide for everything we've covered here, 
on the IndieCast. We have gone mad over these last two segments. Next time, Keith, we're going to get crazy. Looking Uh-oh. to welcome Paul Kupperberg. He's the writer of the crazy spoof on Raiders. We're scheduling that right now. Hoping that Bob Camp, the artist on that spoof, will join us as well. After that, we're going to get crazy and we're going to get cracked with our reviews from both of those magazines. Lots of spectacular spoofs headed your way right here on the further adventures of Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones.